Maybe move your arms, your shoulders around a little bit so you pull your shoulders down from your ears and you feel that back ledge of your skull nice and relaxed on the mat. Oh, look at all those puppies, yay. Oh, Candace, look at that down dog. Try with your palms facing up so you feel that little bit of opening in your shoulders. Block on your lower belly. And then I just want you to take some stock of the block, feeling how light or how dense your block is. Notice if the block moves a lot with your breath right away or if it just subtly moves up and down. And no need to force it either way. Just let it be what it is. Seeing if your breath can make its way low into your abdomen, just to have that more relaxed feel. And then as you take a really big sigh out of your mouth, feel the block melt down towards your lower back. So big breath out. Slow breath in, feel the slow rise of the block. And then do that again, big breath out, feel the block drop down. Yeah, and then as you breathe in, feel that slow float up. And just continue between those two places. The slow falling action as you exhale. And the slow rising action of the block as you inhale. And again, watch if you're purposefully overdoing it. If you find yourself really overworking at it, just try to forget about the breath altogether and breathe naturally. The block is just there as that physical reminder of your inhale and your exhale. And as you continue to breathe here with the block, notice where in your body you can soften a little more, maybe a particular muscle or joint. And then come back to that sensation of the block falling a little heavier in towards your body as you exhale. Feeling it lift upwards as you inhale. And then give yourself 10 more rounds of this and actually count each round. So inhale and exhale is one.
heavy block on your exhale, light as you inhale. Finding that soft place in that one body part you identified just a minute ago. When you do get to your 10th round, I'll know you're done. When you take your block off your belly and just gently set it to the side. Continue to keep that soft breath and see if you can feel the action of your belly now without the assistance of the block. Maybe letting the breath move from the lower belly up towards your collarbones for a little bit more energy. And then you're going to pair the breath by inhaling, opening your eyes, exhaling, closing your eyes, inhaling, opening, exhale to close. Do it a few more times. Notice what it's like to mindfully open and close your eyes. Pairing up with your breath. Go ahead and take it for one more round. Find your eyes open when you're done. And move your head slowly side to side, right and left. You can even stretch a little extra moving towards the outer edge of your ear. Noticing if there's anything happening with your neck that you need to pay attention to in today's practice. Slowly side to side. And then one more time to each side. Bring your head in towards the middle. Bend your right knee. Let your right foot come to the floor. Take a bright breath in all the way up from your belly to your collarbones. Exhale, hug your right knee in towards your right armpit. Point your foot, curl your toes. Mm -hmm. Inhale, straighten your leg up, keep your foot pointed. Interlace your fingers behind your hamstring. Yep, try to curl to the front of the foot, the toes. And then exhale, let go, bend your knee, flex your foot and take it about halfway across your body into a twist. Try not to force it all the way to the floor. And then we're going to do that several more times. Exhale.
Oh, yay. Everyone's still here. Nobody left. It. One second. It just kicked me off, but it's working now. Did okay. it kick you off? Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. But it, I just restarted my computer and it came back. Okay. Sorry. That's okay. The internet died in our whole household, but now it's back. So thank you for your patience. Did everybody do both sides on their back? Okay, cool. So we're gonna come back to knee excuse me, on your back to take banana pose. So bring your feet together and then start to walk them over to the right side, as far over as you can without excessive strain. So over, over, over to the right. And then your arms are gonna follow. So over to the right, just so you're in that slight, slight curve. And then I want you to experiment with one ankle stacked on the other. So you can take left ankle on top of right, or you can take right ankle on top of left. Either one, there's not a right or wrong ankle to cross here. Try to keep your left shoulder relaxed on the ground. You can even take a hold of your right wrist and lift just a little bit more up and over. Easy breath in and out. Especially breathing into that left rib cage, left lung. Feeling that nice opening on the left side of your body. Move your jaw around, your nose around. Continue to breathe. And then you might uncross your ankles and take your feet just a little farther over to the right. Maybe the arms a smidge over to the right, trying to keep both shoulder blades on the ground. Banana asana. Yeah. Couple more breaths, because we all need a little bit extra of that lateral side opening, where the lungs live. Good, last breath in. Exhale, bring your arms to center first. Uncross your ankles and then walk your feet back to the middle. Pause. Let a big sigh out. And then take it to the left side. Walk your feet over, over, over. Make sure both glutes stay on the ground. Then start to move your upper body to the left, assuming that this side is going to be different. So take it little bits at a time and then try maybe one ankle on top of the other. See how that feels for a couple breaths, and then maybe switch. One might feel more lengthening than the other. Switch your wrist, take a hold of your right wrist, just that slight lift up and over. Now breathing onto your right side. Slowly in and slowly out. But feeling that kind of intense opening in the space between your ribs and all the way from your right hip towards your right armpit. Watch if your breath gets stuck or caught. Gently bring it back. And then one more little chance. Take your feet a little farther over to the left. Arms a little farther over to the left. Breathing in and out. And then on an exhale, bring your arms back to center, pause. Start to uncross your ankles, walk your feet back to center. Sweep your arms up and down by your sides, palms facing up, back into Shavasana. Big sigh out. And then bending both knees, feet to the floor, rise up into bridge pose, lifting up through your hips, pressing through your feet, Walking your shoulders as close together as you can. Eyes up towards the ceiling. And just feel that nice press from your feet to the back of your head. A little squeeze of your glutes together towards one another. Just opening up into the fronts of your hips, your hip flexors from all the sitting. And then maybe walk your feet two inches wider, toes slightly turned out. Just seeing how that changes your bridge. 
Couple more breaths here, keeping elevation in your hips by using your glutes and firming your feet into the floor. Last breath in. Exhale, release your hands, peel it down, keeping your feet wide. When your sacrum touches the ground, a little windshield wiper side to side. Letting one knee rotate in, one knee go to the side. Yep. Maybe it starts to go a little closer to the floor. Maybe you stay in the range of motion you're in right now. Good, bring it back to center, stretch both legs up to the ceiling. Find that L position, point your feet, curl your toes. Feel the stretch from right below your knee all the way up your shin, front of your ankle to your toes. And then exhale, hug your knees towards your armpits like a child's pose on your back. Inhale, legs straight up, flexed feet. Now feel the extension from the back of the knee, your calf up into your heel. Exhale, hug your knees out, child's pose on your back. One more each, legs up, toes pointed, feet curling. Exhale, hug your knees out a little wider. Your toes don't have to stay touching. Inhale, feet flexed, stretching upwards, keeping your low back on the ground. Good, everybody. Exhale, hug it in. And then bring your knees together. They don't need to be close into your chest. You're gonna exhale, curl up just about halfway, and then inhale, come down. Exhale, curl up forehead towards your knee, but doesn't need to touch, and then inhale down. So a little push forward of your feet to help you curl up, and then inhale down. Do that a few more times. You might feel it sticky in your middle back. Inhale down. Exhale, curl up, inhale down. Last one, exhale, curl it up. Inhale, bring it down, arms down by your sides. Just a little bit of momentum, knees to forehead, legs overhead, flat pose, looking straight up to the ceiling. Feet can hover from the floor, feet can touch the floor. And then hands to your lower back, fingertips up to the ceiling, Halasana plow pose. Stay right here for a couple more breaths. Again, just looking straight up, right at your knees. And then exhale, curl it back down. So you hug your knees again into your chest, knees together. Yep, breathe in. Exhale, feet go a little forward. Exhale, maybe curl a little higher up, forehead to knees, back down. Again, exhale, curling it up. Maybe you hold your shins, inhale down. Take one more, exhale, curling it up, flexing through your spine. Inhale, down, arms by your side. Same thing, halasana, plow pose. Maybe your feet get a little closer to the floor. Fingers up towards the ceiling, supporting your lower back. Breathing. Yep, one more breath in. And then exhale, release your hands, come back down. You're gonna roll all the way up to sit and then over into tabletop. And just notice that reverberating feeling in your back from doing spinal flexion like that. Breathe in, drop your belly, take your chin forward and your eyes up high in the cow. And then exhale just to neutral back, tabletop. Inhale, cow pose, chin a little forward, eyes go high, and then exhale, neutral. Inhale, cow. Exhale, neutral. A few more times between those two spaces. I've already done that spinal flexion, so that's why we're just doing cow to table. Remember to include your eyes. Mm -hmm. One more each. And then as you come to table, walk your arms forward, puppy pose. Start to let your chest come down, hips stay high. Head can float off the floor, forehead can touch the floor, or one side of your temple can touch the floor. And then notice where you feel constricted in your actual spinal column and breathe right into that point. Maybe it's just a particular area or a particular vertebrae. 
And again, you're breathing right into that space. Let go of any holding in your jaw. Last breath in. Exhale, bring your forearms to the ground, elbows right under your shoulders, right into dolphin pose. And you don't need to lift your knees all the way to extended. Just downward dog on your forearms. First one. Breathe in. Exhale, knees down, back into puppy pose. Outstretch your arms. Let your heart move down. Keep your hips up high. Again, breathe into that same spot that you found on this first one. Breathe into the same place on the second round. Good, one more breath in. Exhale, begin to let your elbows come down. Stack them right under your shoulders. Second downward dog on your forearms. Let your head relax. Keep your knees pretty, pretty heavily bent. Maybe walk your toes up an inch farther. Breathe in. Exhale, knees down, back into puppy pose. Outstretch your arms. Maybe you have more space to lower. Maybe that's not going to suit you right now. If your head is turned, make sure you turn it to the other side. Equalizing through your neck. One more inhale, exhale, back into downward dog on your forearms. Feel free to interlace your fingers, push your forearms into the ground, let your hips go high, head goes down, maybe toes inch up a little bit. Put more bend in your knees so you take some pressure off of your shoulders. One more breath in, and then one more round of each. Puppy pose on a Hatasana. Chest opener right here, full breath. Put a little down and forward press into your hands, just like you would do in downward dog. <clears throat> Exhale, elbows down right underneath your shoulders. Last dolphin pose for now. Downward dog on your forearms. Hips up high. Back of the neck is nice and smooth. One more breath in. Exhale, knees down, come back into tabletop. And then move your way into a forward fold. So you can walk your hands all the way back, walk your feet all the way up, hanging down and tucking your chin in. Mm -hmm. Inhale, come up halfway, hands anywhere along your legs. Exhale, bring it down. Inhale three quarters of the way up with a flat back, and then exhale down. Inhale halfway, chest parallel to the floor, yep. Exhale down. Inhale three quarters, keep your knees bent. Exhale down. One more time, each halfway on your inhale, lower on your exhale. Three quarters on your inhale, hold it here. And then inhale, come all the way up to stand. Good, shake it out a little bit. Legs, feet a little wider than your hips. Standing twist, go over to the left, over to the right. And as you go to the left, you come onto your right big toe. You come to the right, come onto your left big toe. Just a nice way to rinse out through your spine. Relax through your jaw. Good, slow it down. Keep your feet wide. Turn your toes slightly out, come down into a squat. Left shoulder down, look over to the right. Inhale up, exhale right shoulder down, look over to the left. So just twisting in a different way now, one shoulder looking over the opposite way. You can get a little lower in your hips if you wanna work more towards your legs or stay a little higher up, rotating from your belly button. Yeah, everyone's got it. As slow or as swift as you need it to be. Try not to overly push with your hands. Remember the twist comes from your exhale and your navel. One more time each way. 
And then as you come to center, shoulders down away from your ears and a few cat cows. Rounding your spine, tucking your chin. Inhale, pulling your heart forward, hugging your shoulder blades together. So a few just standing cat cows in this goddess squat. Forward and back, all the way from your middle spine to your tailbone, and from your tailbone up towards your neck. Last one each. And then as you come back up, slowly stand, bring your feet together. Standing banana pose. Cross your left ankle over your right. Reach your arms up, take a hold of your right wrist, and you're gonna lift up and over to the left side. Hug through your inner thighs, and then maybe turn your head, see if that affects your balance. Look up towards the ceiling. Exhale, look down towards the floor. Inhale, look up towards the ceiling. Exhale, look down towards the floor. Last time. Exhale. Good, release your arms, bring your shoulders right over your hips first. And then simply switch. Take your right leg from behind, forward. Take your arms up, hold of your left wrist and lift up and over to that right side now. Turning your head up on the inhale, turning your head down on your exhale. No hurry, just with your in and out breath. Keeping your inner thighs hugged and the big toe sides of your feet pushing into the floor. One more each. Good, slowly bring your shoulders to stack over your hips. Sweep your arms down. Uncross your legs and come right into chair pose, hands at your heart. Knees well behind your toes, leaning forward as much as you'd like for your lower back sake. Inhale, sweep your arms back behind you, palms facing up. And then exhale, hands back to your heart. Inhale, sweeping your arms back, maybe lifting them a bit higher, and then exhale, hands to your heart. And just do that a few times to move into your shoulders while you breathe into the effort of your legs. Last one each. Inhale, arms sweep back, fingers reach. Exhale, hands to your heart. Inhale, come to stand. Ooh, give your legs a moment. You can always shake it out. Just really moving your muscle away from your bone. And then again, exhale, Utkatasana, chair pose. If you want to balance a little bit more, lift your heels ever so slightly. It might not even be noticeable on the screen, but they're off the ground. Inhale, arms back. Exhale, thumbs to touch your chest. Do that three more times. Your inner ankles squeezing towards one another. Slow this last one down. And then when your hands come together, heels come down. Inhale, straighten your legs. One more time, exhale, chair pose. Good, breathe in. Take your left arm across so the back of your hand is to the outside of the right knee. And then reach your right arm up. Just a different twisted chair. Yep, keep weight back in your heels. Check that you can see all your toes. And if your left knee's a little ahead of your right, no big deal. One more breath in and out. Inhale, come back to center. Release chair pose. <sighs> Exhale, sit it back and down. Twist to the other side. Right arm crosses. Left arm reaches out and up. And turn your head anywhere where you can hold it for these last three to four breaths. Maybe letting your belly hug up and in towards your spine where your low back feels comfortable. Good, one more breath in. Finish it with an exhale. Come to stand on an inhale, arms down by your sides. Nice, inhale, sweep them out and up. Exhale, widen your feet, forward fold, hang it down. Inhale, come up halfway. 
And then exhale, forearm plank, elbows underneath. Walk your feet back. You can always take a high plank if you'd rather. If that's better for your shoulders, yep. Hips elevated, feet separated. Good, breathe in. Exhale, knees down, quads down, sphinx pose. Ah, lift up to your chest. Just one breath in here. Exhale, come down onto your forehead for three cobras. Up on your inhale, low on your exhale. Take two more at your own breath. Press through table or child's pose. You can even press through that puppy pose on a hatasana and then move into traditional downward dog. Hips up and back, arms extended, knees bent. Spread even wider to your fingers, right? Really feel the skin of your hands open up. Because we've done some of those lateral side bends, really breathe into the right and left compartments of your body. They exist. Sometimes we just forget about them. One more full round of breath before you begin to travel your feet to your hands, your hands to your feet in any way that you like. Inhale halfway up. Exhale, dive it down. Inhale, reverse swan dive, come up. We're gonna go through that two more times. Exhale, take it down, nice and easy. Let everybody inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, it's quite a journey to get to forearm plank, so if you need any posture in between, and you need to set down any body part to safely get into that forearm plank, please do. You guys know. Anything that's best for you is what I want you to do. And since we all love it so much, we're going to hold it a little longer, continuing to breathe, to lengthen out from the back of your neck all the way to your tailbone. Nice. Stay with any kind of shaking or reverberating feeling you feel in your muscles. Last breath in, exhale, knees, quads, hips, sphinx pose, just for one breath, arrive. Exhale, lower, three cobras. You know the drill, up on your inhale, down on your exhale. Yogi's choice, tabletop, child's pose, or puppy pose. At least three breaths, wherever you decide. Moving your way into Adho Mukha Svanasana, Downward Facing Dog. Three breaths. Maybe you separate your feet a little more, remembering that always helps your lower back. And then travel, feet to hands, hands to feet, walking, hopping, floating, stepping, anything, forward fold. Inhale, come up halfway, reach your crown forward. Yeah, exhale, fold it down. Inhale, stretch out and up. We got one more to go through. We've got all the time to do it, so take your time. Exhale, dive it down. Inhale, find that table sensation in your back, slight bend in your knees. Exhale, journey your way, forearm plank. Wiggle around. Again, the wider the feet, the more your bone structure will be supported. But try and keep your elbows, you don't want those super wide, you want them right under your shoulders just for stability purpose. Look at your fingertips or a little bit ahead of them, keeping your neck long. But don't get top heavy here. Push back into your heels. A little extra lift up into your hips. 
a little warmth circulating everywhere. One more breath in. Exhale, knees, quads, hips, sphinx. Now we're gonna stay in sphinx a little extra long on this round or push down through your hands, elevate your elbows a tiny bit, seal pose. If this hurts your lower back in any way, come back into sphinx or all the way on your belly. And there is an option to push your arms straight, but again, you don't want this part of your body yelling at you. If it does, it's just not the pose for you today. Good, two more breaths wherever you're at. Nice, everybody. Slowly exhale through Sphinx. This time, hands stacked on top of each other, elbows wide. Glue your forehead to your top hand. Glue your bottom hand to your top hand. Let everything lift up, glue together as you inhale, lower as you exhale. So your arms completely lift, forehead and hands glued together, exhale, lower. Take three more. The height doesn't matter, the breath matters. Up as you inhale, down as you exhale. Last two. This is also a great way to keep your neck neutral and stable. Good, lower, take a pause. And then you've got those three options again, child pose, puppy pose, tabletop. All are good choices. But they're not all gonna be the right choice for you today. Five breaths. You can always change your pose for the last breath or two. Work your way into downward facing dog, feet touching together. Closing it up. Inhale, right leg slowly lift as you breathe in. Point your foot, curl your toes. Exhale, knee towards your nose just as a mechanism to step through. And don't take the longest lunge of your life. Just wherever your foot lands, let it be there. Slowly come up high runner's lunge. That being said, if you need a wider base, take your feet wider apart, arms up. As you exhale, your back knee bends and you twist towards the right. And then inhale, your back leg straightens and you square your shoulders. Exhale, bend your elbows, twist to the right. Water wheel, as this is called sometimes. Inhale, high lunge. Take it at your own pace. Your front knee stays super strong and stable right over your ankle. If you wanna let your arms have a break, you can just allow them to be by your sides or on your hips. Again, it's all right to feel it in your legs. Not always comfortable, but worth it. Right? You're just using your own body weight here. Last two, exhale and twist from your belly. Inhale, back leg straightens. Last one. Good, come to center. Everyone, hands to your hips. Breathe in. Exhale, hands frame your front foot. Step back to woof woof. You know what that means. Yeah, ah. Breathe in, exhale, knees down, stay at table, go to puppy or go to child's pose. So you're called three breaths. The fullest three breaths you can give. And then before you move back into your tabletop, to see if you feel that tingling on the right side from the effort and the readiness of the left side as we move there. Tabletop, exhale, downward dog, feet together. Left leg foot pointed, toes curl as you inhale. Exhale, the knee to nose just to simply step through. Medium length, length lunge, slowly come up. Arms lift, 
Use your exhale, bend your back knee, twist to the left, water wheel. Inhale, just the back leg straightens, shoulders square. Exhale, turn. Inhale, center. And continue with or without your arms. Always with your breath. Try and keep that front knee bent so it stabilizes you. It's just your back knee that's changing from bent to straighter. Last two. Good. Go ahead, take your time with the last round. As you come to center, hands to your hips. Breathe in. Exhale, you're gonna spin your back foot down. Come through center, wide-legged forward fold. And it's okay if your butt is towards the screen. Breathe in, lift your chest. Exhale, bend your knees, come halfway down. Halfway. Good, breathe in. Exhale, hands to the ground. You can stay in this wide-legged forward fold. You can go upside down in any other way that you'd like. You can also just stay right here or come into the half position. So I'm going to give you a good two minutes to be upside down in some way, and this counts, wide-legged forward fold. So don't think you have to change it. Two whole minutes. Yep, you don't have to go upside down from wide-legged. You can change it up. If you are in the wide-legged variation, change your arms. So maybe interlace your fingers behind you, reach your knuckles up, and play with changing the weight on your feet. So not all in the heels, not all in the toes, kind of going back and forth to find that strong place in between the two. Yep, you can also abandon this shape and do whatever you want, really. Yeah, I see some side to side kind of warrior two lunge like actions, get into it. Feels nice on the hip sockets. Still got plenty of time if you're upside down. We'll all meet back in that wide-legged forward fold. Take your time. Turning back around so your left foot faces forward, right heel spins up. Tap your back knee down. Take it into a momentary half split. Don't be afraid to grab your box. Put them to the sides of you so you can really get into your hamstring. We're just trying to get a little bit of everything today. Fully flex your foot. Fully point your toes, curling them. Again, feeling from your knee to your shin to your toenails. Maybe you stay here, maybe you return to the flex or a little drag back of your left heel towards your hips. It's that energetic isometric hug back. Good, one or two more breaths. If you need longer, always welcome to stay. Bring your left hand on the inside of your foot. You're gonna turn and be very careful with your knee to the big toe side of your left foot and your right knee is gonna come down underneath. So you're just gonna pivot like gate pose. I'm gonna move the block so you guys can see. You can stay in gate pose or slightly take your knee out to the side going a little bit more into a straddle. Don't hurt yourselves, everybody. 
I can't come pick you up out of this shape. I'm gonna suggest keeping your left toes, excuse me, your right toes tucked and just taking your knee a little wider than your hip. If that bothers you in any way, bring your right knee back underneath so you're in gate pose. Yeah. Yeah, not to the point of strain, just to the point of space. Last breath in and out. Everyone bring your right knee back in underneath. Bring your left knee in. Mm -hmm. We're just gonna go right to the other side. So right leg out, gate pose to start. Left toes to tuck. You can maybe take your left knee a little wider. Getting closer to a straddle. You can come down onto your forearms. You can keep that outer right foot, baby toe side towards the ground, or you can come onto the big toe side of your foot. Again, no need to try to touch your inner thighs all the way to the floor, unless that's a true ability of your body, which mine, not so much. That's a lot of hip socket movement and just shape of the hip. Ooh, watch your shoulders. Happy shoulders. Last two breaths. Nice, gently bring your left knee in, 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 under your hip, pivot around, bring your friends the blocks, Ardha Hanumanasana, right leg straight, left knee under your hip, good. So you've made a 180. Try with a flexed foot, lifted chest. Pointed foot, curl your toes. Maybe a little drag back of your front heel. I like to do that in a flexed foot position. Just feels kind of funky in a pointed foot position for me. Last couple breaths. Higher up with your chest, easier in your jaw. Go ahead and last breath in. Exhale, take your right foot back, both knees down. If you need extra padding under your knees, take your mat, fold it up. Two times into camel, you've got blocks, so you can put them on the outsides of your ankles. Try to go with shoulders, hips, and knees in that totem pole stack. You can begin with your hands on your lower back, fingers pointed down, and it's just a little lift and lean. Keep your chin in. That might be your camel pose. Couple breaths. Feel your shoulders pull down. Down, down, down towards the floor. Good, breathe in. Exhale, take your bum back a little bit to release this. And then take your hips back forward. You do that exact same thing again. Just a little up and back. You can take one hand down. Half camel, you can take both hands down to the blocks, to your feet. And try and keep your chin in towards your chest so your chest is lifting upwards. Like your chest is trying to touch your chin. Making sure your back is fairly happy with you. You're gonna feel some compression, but not anything excessive. That's not what we're looking for. Come out of it by sitting back. You can sit all the way, hips to heels. Ah, just take a moment. That way you're not trying to do that slingshot action up. And then another way to come into camel is from a seated position, hands on your blocks, or hands to your ankles, and you give a little push forward and up. And if you're like, no, no, don't wanna do that today, come back up into that stacked starting position. Shoulders, hips, and knees. Like you're reaching up and over a beach ball. Good, everybody. Last one. It's again about your chin rising, excuse me, your chest rising towards your chin. Yep, yep. When you feel done with this pose, sit back, Virasana or Vajrasana, hero's pose, or just sitting straight back. Hips to heels, knees together or hero's pose, separating your feet and sitting in between them or sitting with a block and breathe.
One more breath in. Exhale. Sit to one side. Give yourself enough space with bent knees to roll onto your back. Hugging them in, hugging them wide, your call. Small massaging circles for your low spine. Because I'd rather you do this as a counter pose to support your lower back from camel, rather than going full on into flexion in a child's pose. Switch directions. Again, so we're not going from one extreme to the other, we're just going to the nice middle ground. Center. And then if you would like a little spinal flexion, push your feet forward, round up, chin to chest, inhale, come down. Exhale, round it up, chin to chest, inhale down. One more, on your exhale, bring it down. Arms by your side, an option for one final plow or plow to shoulder stand. Look straight up and down. Make sure any pose you go in and your fingertips are up towards the ceiling, supporting yourself. A little space between your chin and your chest. One final way to just flip the fluid from your ankles towards your organs and your heart. Stay for at least five more breaths. Ten more if you'd like. Whether it's plow, whether it's shoulder stand. Slower breaths. And then work your way towards some variation of Karna Pandasana, deaf man's pose. So your knees come towards either your temples or all the way towards your ears. It's a lot of spinal flexion. Your feet don't have to touch the floor, but they might. Two more breaths. Release your hands, palms down towards the floor, or hold your back as you slowly roll back out. Full spinal motion on the floor. Full spinal length. Ooh. Legs up. Point your toes, curl them one last time. Breathe in. Exhale, bend your knees, feet down. Take any final pose that you need. Poses, movements. Ported bridge, twist, pigeon on your back. And then work your way right to where we started, block on your lower belly. And if your back just needs some serious support today, keep your knees bent in your Shavasana and knock your inner knees together. You can do this in constructive rest. You can do Shavasana with one leg straight, one leg bent. Or the other leg straight, other leg bent. Hands anywhere where you feel comfortable and comforted. Block on your lower belly. And just for five rounds, focus on the exhale, feeling the block move down towards your lower spine. Don't worry about your inhale, just your exhale. at least five times. And then just let your breath do its own thing. body soak up your natural inhale and exhale. Let your breath 
brain rest. your breath to rest in your natural rhythm. You can always remove the block at any time if you'd like. Yourself have this clear slate to move into the rest of your Friday or the start of it. And to come out of Shavasana today, as you inhale, let your eyes open. As you exhale, let them close. That again, like a slow shade rising up. And slowly closing it as you exhale. Do that two to three more times. Begin to add any other awakening way to your body with your breath, with your movement, any stretch, length, or reach. And then slowly moving yourself onto one side, probably your right side, so you've got energy for the day. And then from your side up to sit. Sit on your block since it's close. Hands together at your heart, spine lifting tall. We'll just clear three breaths together in and out. In as you sit tall. Out as you feel relaxed. One more. Take a moment. Thank yourself for making the time and the space today. And thank you to the four of you for spending your morning and your practice here with me today. Namaste. Thanks everybody. Before you hop off, I'm gonna email all four of you every single recording that I have from July because you four have been the like most, most regular students. So I'm gonna send you, I always record it, put it on YouTube, but it's unlisted so people can't find it. But I have all the links, so I'm gonna send them to the four of you so you have all the classes and you can just take them whenever you want. Yay. Thanks, Amy Jane. Yeah. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for, for being so consistent. I so appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. And I'll see you guys again. So we'll have class next week. No class on Christmas Day. Because I promised my dad <laughs> I would make him pancakes. All right. so that's Christmas Day. Sounds great. Good plan. All right, everybody. Bye. See you next week. Bye -bye. Friday. Take care.